Hello dear viewers, welcome. Myself Professor Mishram Kasunetra, Assistant Professor in Department of English, JAT Arts, Science and Commerce College for Women, Maligao. There is one Spanish proverb, Pride comes before fall. Dear viewers, today we are going to discuss a poem, The Rock and the Bubble, written by the American poet Louisa May Alcott. The poem presents a story of a proud bubble and a steadfast rock. There is conversation between these two creatures and Alcott has described how foolish pride has catastrophic or disastrous effect on one's life. In this poem, the rock acts as a symbol of calmness, strength, steadiness in the face of challenges, whereas the bubble stands for those who become ignorant of reality for their misplaced pride in their boastful self. The bubble is proud. The bubble is ignorant about its reality. And this pride leads to the end of the bubble. The rock and the bubble is the story of a bubble that once come across an immovable rock. This immovable rock is standing firmly in a sea and the bubble arrogantly tells the rock to move away and to give way to the bubble. But the rock denies. Now first we will focus on the writer. Louisa May Alcott Louisa May Alcott was an American writer and a poet. She was born on November 29, 1832 at Germantown, Pennsylvania, United States. Her father, Bronson Alcott, was an educator and a philosopher and her mother was a homemaker. Louisa May Alcott died on 6th March 1888 at the age of 55 at Boston, Massachusetts in United States and her dead body is buried in the same city's Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. First she wrote with a pen name A. M. Brand. Her notable works are Little Woman, Little Man, Joe's Boys and Eight Cousins. Louisa May Alcott resided in Boston. She worked as a domestic servant and also as a teacher to support her family. She was a reformer. She worked to gain the right to vote for women. She opposed the drinking of alcohol. She served as a nurse. She wrote down her experience of her work in her literary work, Hospital Sketches. So, in her poetry or in her writing, we find autobiographical touches. The present poem, The Rock and the Bubble, consists of 20 quatrains. Quatrain means a stanza 
having four lines. In this poem, the poet has used the ballad scheme A B C B. It means the second and the fourth line rhyme with each other. The overall poem is written in iambic diameter and trimeter. Here in this poem, the bubble is bubbling with excessive pride. The bubble is arrogant and talks arrogantly to the rock. And finally, the bubble is broken or the life of the bubble is over. In this poem, the poet has used some poetic devices such as personification. Here in the poem, the rock, the bubble, waves, foam, spray, etc. are personified. The poet has used alliteration also. It occurs in bare brown, rainbow robe, friendly for, rough rock, make me, bubble broke, etc. The poet has used irony also. It is presented in the line. I am the fairest thing that floats on the sea. Now, the bubble says, boasting, I am the fairest thing. But, finally, the bubble's life is over. The poet has used another poetic device that is repetition and it is used in the line Now make way, make way. So these are some poetic devices used by the writer. The central idea of the rock, the rock and the bubble is about excessive pride and the transgression of one's limit. In this poem, Louisa May Alcott has given message to the readers to be like the rock that remains calm even it faces some difficulties or some problems. The rock is well aware about its reality and it remains calm, kind and pleasant always. Whereas the bubble in the poem is devoid of common sense and the excessive pride of the bubble leads to the catastrophic event. Now in the first stanza of this poem, the two main characters of the poem are introduced. They are introduced in the first two stanzas and here these two characters are personified. First we will see this first stanza. Oh, a bare brown rock stood up in the sea, the waves at its feet dancing merrily. Now here the poet has presented the image of a rock standing up in the sea and the waves are dancing merrily, happily at the feet of the rock. The rock is standing in the vast sea. 
it appears as a great figure the rock is unafraid of the ferocious waves as the poet has said the waves are dancing merrily means the rock has friendly relationship with the waves because they are dancing merrily at its feet a little bubble once came sailing by and thus to the rock did it gaily cry now in the following stanza alcott has presented a little sparkling bubble this bubble came sailing by the waves the rock is standing in the middle of the sea so the rock is in the middle of the path of the bubble hence the bubble cheerfully cried out to the rock and asked the rock to move from its path the bubble's happy mood is reflected in these lines so the bubble is carefree the bubble is very happy ho oh, clumsy brown stone quick make way for me i'm the fairest thing that floats on the sea now in the third stanza the poet has used an expression that gives a hint at the mindset of the bubble the bubble begins talking to the stone by using the expression ho oh. now it is really disrespectful to tell someone to move away in this manner now the attitude of the bubble is reflected now this expression clearly shows that the bubble is proud now here the bubble refers to the rock as clumsy brown stone now clumsy means graceless awkward now in this way the bubble has given hint to its own beauty there is uncaring tone of the bubble and the bubble says to the rock to make way for it and it gives some reason to the rock the bubble says to the rock that it is the fairest thing among all the floating things on the sea and therefore the rock must follow its order so really it is quite funny or comical now one needs to be respectful to others because we know give respect take respect here the bubble is not ready to give respect to the rock the first flaw or mistake of the bubble is to be disrespectful to others now here the bubble is talking in very boastful nature boastful manner and says to the rock that i am the fairest thing on the sea now the bubble again talks in boastful manner the bubble says see my rainbow robe see my crown of light my glittering form so airy and bright see my rainbow robe here the bubble tells the rock to see the rainbow robe and crown of light on its surface when the light gets distracted 
from its surface it is split into seven colors as the rainbow therefore here the rock the bubble says to the rock that i am wearing a rainbow robe i am wearing a crown of light so here the bubble talks in proud manner about its appearance here the poet has depicted the glittering form of the bubble it that it is airy and bright now in the next stanza the poet says over the waters blue i am floating away to dance by the shore with the foam and spray now here the bubble is floating over the blue waters in order to reach to the shore the bubble is dancing with the foam and spray now here the poet has personified the foam and spray because as the bubble and the rock are personified in the same way the foam and the spray are personified the foam and spray are also made of sea water just like bubble so they share similar characteristics in terms of their mindset now here the bubble tells the rock to move and give way to him now make way make way for the waves are strong and their rippling feet bear me fast along now in this stanza the bubble stone has become very angry the bubble says to the rock make way make way now there is repetition of this word here it gives hint to the bubbles annoyance with the rock and it is because the bubble has excessive pride and this excessive pride has made it blind that bubble cannot understand the fact that the rock cannot be moved and it has to make its own way to get past the rock but because of that ego because of the pride the bubble cannot understand it now here on this line the speaker says that the waves are the waves rippling feet bear it fast along the shore now here this is a metaphor these waves are having feet just like human beings so here we can say that the waves are running just like human beings but the great rock stood straight up in the sea it looked gravely down and said pleasantly but the great rock stood straight up in the sea it looked gravely down and said pleasantly now here alcott captures the reaction of the rock to the bubble now here the poet has used the word great the rock is great it has the, the, that means the poet is talking about the size of the rock though the rock is bare clumsy and brown but it is great it is big it has great heart also the rock is aware about its strength about its power about its potential therefore what others means here the bubble it's saying about the rock 
doesn't matter to it the rock is standing straight up in the sea now this straight posture of the rock shows the confidence and strength and power of the rock this arrogant request or arrogant order i am not saying request but the arrogant order of the bubble cannot make the rock angry but the rock looked down at the bubble and later on the rock pleasantly addressed to the bubble the rock addressed to the bubble as little friend the rock said to the bubble little friend you must go some other way for i have not stirred this many a long day little friend the bubble addressed to the rock as clumsy brown stone but the rock talks to the bubble in pleasant tone and addresses the bubble as a little friend the rock tells the bubble to go some other way now here one we can clearly see the difference between the way they speak to each other the bubble addresses the rock in very rude manner arrogant manner whereas the rock replies in soft and pleasant tone the rock says it would definitely make way for the bubble but it has not moved from its place for a long time now here alcott has presented the interesting contrast between the rock and the bubble the rock is immovable and it refers to the unyielding spirit of the rock whereas the bubble is floating the bubble is floating with the flow of the sea with the flow of the waves and such things do not last long now here the rock has courage and therefore the rock says to the bubble that it cannot move the next stanza great billows have dashed and angry winds blown but my sturdy form is not overthrown there were great billows now these great billows symbolize hardship of man's life now here the rock says that great billows dashed over the rock but the rock did not stir a bit even the angry winds tried to blow the rock away but the rock remained steadfast so here the poet has used the symbol of this great billows and the angry winds the poet wants to give message that if a person has great will power that person cannot be defeated the rock tells to the bubble that though there were great waves they dash to the rock even the angry winds try to blow it away but the rock remained steadfast the rock says to the bubble nothing can stir me in the air or sea then how can i move little friend for thee now here the rock is talking about its sturdy form the rock 
says nothing can stir me in the air or sea the rock is saying that nothing can move it but here if we focus on these lines we cannot say that the rock is arrogant because it is the reality that rock cannot be moved the rock cannot change its place so here we can say that the rock has confidence the rock has strength the rock has power and therefore the rock says to the bubble that nothing can stir it now here the boasting bubble is made aware about the reality the rock kindly asks the bubble that it cannot be moved from the place because it is at the place for a many days or many many years then the waves all laughed in their voices sweet and the sea birds looked from their rocky sea then the waves all laughed in their voices sweet and the sea birds looked from their rocky sea the waves around the bubble can understand the foolishness of the bubble the waves are not arrogant like the bubble they are aware about the reality therefore they laughed at the folly of the bubble and they laughed at the folly of the bubble in sweet voice now we have the waves are personified and the waves are speaking in sweet manner now here the poet talks about the sea birds the sea birds looked at the scene from their rocky seat their nests are made in the rock they looked at the gay bubble in similar way as the waves looked at the bubble the rock is talking in pleasant mood the rock is not furiated at the bubble and therefore the waves and the birds looked at the bubble they are laughing at the folly of the bubble now the bubble cried out in anger it made its round cheek glow with foolish pride now here in this stanza the poet says at the bubble gay who angrily cried while its round cheek glowed with a foolish pride the bubble cried out in anger the bubble cried out loud in anger and therefore the cheeks of the bubble glow with foolish pride now here alcott compares the idea of pride with its foolishness excessive pride leads towards uh, what we can say that meaningless things or towards to the end of a person now here the bubble becomes angry and therefore the round cheeks of the bubble glowed with foolish pride now the bubble says you shall move for me and you shall not mock at the words i say you ugly rough rock you shall move for me and you shall not mock at the words i say you ugly rough rock again the bubble ordered the rock to move the bubble said that the rock has to move for it 
mind therefore the waves and the sea birds burst out in laughter <coughs> the bu bubble said to the rock you ugly rough rock here the bubble cursed the rock for its ugliness and rough surface the bubble said i am fair i am beautiful but you are ugly you are rough the bubble is looking at the rock in satirical way now in the next stanza be silent wild birds why stare you so stop laughing rude waves and help me to go now here the bubble is addressing to the birds and to the waves it rudely tells the waves to stop laughing it rudely tells the birds to stop laughing and not only this the bubble says they must help it to reach the shore the bubble orders the wild birds to be silent it orders the waves to stop laughing for i am the queen of the ocean here and this cruel stone cannot make me fear for i am the queen of the ocean here the bird the bubble makes fun of itself by saying that it is the queen of the ocean and here we can say that the bubble is really very arrogant how can a little thing just like a bubble can be the queen of such a vast ocean it is impossible but the bubble's excessive pride has made it blind the bubble thinks that it is the queen of the ocean and therefore it try it talks in very arrogant manner to the rock dashing fiercely up with a scornful word fully here alcott says about the bubble dashing fiercely up with a scornful word foolish bubble broke but the rock never stirred now here the bubble is unaware about its reality so the bubble moves away ahead and it jumps at the rock without heeding to the consequences it dashed fiercely up with scorn and it broke and in this stanza the poet says but the rock never stirred means the rock never moved here the bubble was foolish and therefore it broke but the rock is aware about its reality about its strength about its power therefore it remains unstirred then said the sea birds sitting in their nest to the little ones leaning on their breasts the sea birds who were far from the scene witnessed the foolish ending of the bubble's boastful life they were watching all these things they were observing all these things and they uh, they realized that the bubble was proud arrogant it was boastful life it was boastful and therefore the boastful life of the bubble ended
Now here, the sea bird tells the little ones not to be like the bubble. They say to the sea bird, then said the sea bird sitting in their nest to the little ones leaning on their best breasts, be not like bubbles, headstrong, rude and vain, seeking by violence your object to gain. Now here, these little ones are leaning on the breasts of the birds. Now these sea birds tell those little ones not to be headstrong. Now here the meaning of headstrong is stubborn, unruly, rude and vain. Now these are the qualities of the bubble and because of these qualities of the bubble, the life of the bubble is over. The bubble tried to move the rock but it is really difficult. It is something impossible and the rock cannot be moved. And therefore, as the bubble jumped to its own death unknowingly and therefore, the sea birds try to try lesson to their little ones. They said, be not like bubble, headstrong, rude and vain. This bubble try to seek power or try to seek go ahead by violence. But finally, it leads to his, its own death. Now the sea birds said to their little ones, But be like the rock, steadfast, true and strong, yet cheerful and kind and firm against wrong. Now here, the sea birds are giving message to the little ones. They tell the little ones to be like the rock. They should learn from the steadiness, truthfulness, strength of the rock. The rock cannot be moved. The rock cannot be moved by the violent waves or the angry winds. Because the rock is strong. Though the rock is so strong, so powerful, the rock remains calm. And the calmness of the rock shows its true strength. Now, we can learn these qualities from the rock. The rock is very strong. The rock is Steadfast, true and strong. Now the sea bird said, Heed little birdlings, And wiser you will be, For the lesson learned today by the sea. They said to the young ones, To be like the rock. They said, That the little birdlings, Should be wiser, Because, they have learnt a lesson by the rock. So here, in this poem, the poet has given message to the readers. The poet has tried to teach moral lesson to the readers. The poet says, The excessive pride in oneself can have catastrophic effects on life and arrogance leads to ignorance and this ignorance makes one blind to reality. The bubble was 
proud and arrogant and it made it blind to the reality the poet gives message that the rock remains calm and pleasant to the arrogant bubble even the waves and storm could not move it from its place due to its steadfastness and internal strength and we too should remain steadfast in spite of difficulties and problems in life furthermore we can also learn from the bubbles flaw we should not be proud and arrogant like the bubble the central idea of the poem deals with how excessive pride made the bubble ignorant of the actions it took alcott has contrasted the character of the bubble and the rock and tells readers to be like the latter ones means to be like the rock so here we get message from this poem thank you